You know that your freedom of speech is no longer guaranteed and protected by your government when you, as a politician, making a campaign speech during an election campaign, quote from a former prime minister, and are arrested on the spot on suspicion of religious or racial uh, harassment because of that quote. And this is exactly what happened to Paul Weston, chairman of the Liberty GB party, who, while standing for election to the European Parliament, was arrested on the steps of the uh, West, uh, West Winchester Guild Hall for quoting Winston Churchill last week. The supposedly offending quote was from The River Wars, a book written by the young Winston Churchill in 1899 when he was a soldier fighting in the Sudan. This is the quote. How dreadful are the curses which Mohammedan Mohammedanism lays on its votaries. Besides the fanatical frenzy, which is as dangerous in a man as hydrophobia in a dog, there is this fearful, fatalistic apathy. The effects are apparent in many countries. Improvident habits, slovenly systems of agriculture, sluggish methods, sluggish methods of commerce and insecurity of property exist wherever the followers, followers of the prophet rule or live. A degraded sensualism deprives this life of its grace and refinement, the next of its dignity and sanctity. The fact that in Mohammedan law every woman must belong to some man as his absolute property, either as a child, a wife, or a concubine, must delay the final extinction of slavery until the faith of Islam has ceased to be a great power among men. Thousands become the brave and loyal soldiers of the faith. All, known, all know how to die, but the influence of the religion paralyzes the social development of those who follow it. No stronger retrograde force exists in the world. Far from being moribund, Mohammedanism is a militant and proselytizing faith. So, and now we are joined on the line from England by the man who was arrested for making that quote on the streets, Mr. Paul Weston. Are you there, Paul? I am, Robert. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on. Well, thank you for uh, for coming on. Uh, can you tell us exactly what happened on the day that you were arrested for quoting Winston Churchill? Well, it was uh, it was in a, a place called Winchester, uh, which is part of the uh, southeast constituency for the EU election, and uh, so it was chosen specifically uh, uh, because of the campaign. And I stood on the steps of the Guild Hall and uh, and suggested that people who live in Winchester are not necessarily uh, living next door to large Muslim communities, so probably don't know very much about it. So I thought I would just explain it via the words of Winston Churchill, but I didn't mention the fact, of course, that they were Winston Churchill's words. And the moment I started talking, uh, some woman uh, popped up and said, this is absolutely disgusting and racist, and probably got onto her telephone and called the police. About two minutes later, uh, the police turned up, told me that if I didn't stop doing what I was doing, uh, they would arrest me. I said, arrest me for what? And they said, we would arrest you for uh, 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 causing distress and concern to people who are who are listening to you. And I said, well, I think that's ridiculous. I'm operating under under a, a parliamentary campaign, and I don't care if people are distressed or concerned about it. You know, it is my democratic right to say it. And they said, if you continue saying it, we would arrest you. So I continued saying it, and they, uh, they arrested me, took me down to the police station. The initial arrest was, uh, was failure uh, uh, to obey a dispersal notice, but then when they reviewed the stuff out of the police station, they then added, well, well they dropped the first charge and added the uh, racial and religious aggravation under uh, something called Section 4 of the Public Order Act for racially religious uh, aggravated intentional harassment, alarm, distress in words or in writing. And, of course, in, in writing was, was also the actual uh, script I had of the Churchill speech. So if Winston Churchill were alive today and he had published that book, The River Wars, he would be arrested? Uh, yes, I honestly think that he would, because because the a few years ago we had a terrible uh, a terrible racist murder here where some poor black chap was killed by a gang of whites, and somebody called uh, uh, Lord McPherson came up with a a definition of a racist incident, and this is what the whole problem in this country stems around. I'll I'll read you out the definition. Uh, 
it, it will now encompass any incident which is perceived to be racist by the victim or any other person. Now, you know, anything can be perceived to be anything. So, so this really makes it completely wide open that even if you say something very, very uh, soft in terms of causing offence, if somebody perceives it to be racist, the police, because of this law, the police are duty-bound to arrest you and to prosecute you, which essentially means that freedom of speech is now completely finished in this country when it comes to race or religion. We have similar laws here in Canada under our Human Rights Commissions and Acts. and uh, Very we, similar. We use the word perceived as well, I believe. Um, it makes it a very subjective law. And, um, you know... Back in the day, Winston Churchill is probably more famously known for that one speech, we'll fight on the beaches and oceans, we will never surrender. Well, it looks to me, in my editorializing opinion here, that Britain has surrendered 70 years after he made that speech. Do you think so? Uh, uh, yes, I'm quite convinced that we have. You know, we had this remarkable situation when when uh, Fusilier Lee Rigby was, was killed three months or so ago. And yes. uh, David Cameron said this has nothing to do with Islam. And Boris Johnson, the mayor of London, said this has nothing to do with Islam, even though these guys that did it were, were, were quoting the Quran as they, uh, as they saw the poor chap's head off. So, it, you know, it is this willful, total denial of the reality of Islam in this country. And it's either because they are very frightened of Islam, or it's because they simply don't want to go to the necessary trouble they would have to go to if they wanted to do anything about it. So either for a quiet life or cowardice, the establishment has uh, has essentially uh, submitted before Islam. And that's what Islam means, isn't it? The word itself means submission. Uh, that, you think that maybe the uh, the whole issue here is not so much that your freedom of speech has been taken away, which is bad enough. It's the double standard, the hypocrisy of the progressives, the left, the people in uh, in the intelligentsia, in, in the establishment. Um, it, that's the issue that they treat with kid gloves, Islamists who call for the death of people and war in the streets of London while they arrest a peaceful man like yourself. During an election. During an during election for pointing out the failings of their ideology. The, the hypocrisy, I, to me, is more of a germane issue. Uh, and that, that the, the taking away of your freedom of speech seems to be just simply a symptom of this, what I would call, the true Islamophobia. They are the people who are afraid of the Islamists. Would you, would you agree? Yes, I think you're absolutely right on that. And, you know, I think one example of this is the... Uh, is the this craven attitude that uh, that the entire establishment has. You know, it's not just the politicians, it's the BBC as well, who constantly refer to Islam as the religion of peace. You know, they never talk about any other religion as a religion of peace. It's only the one which quite clearly isn't terribly peaceful. And so it, it is its rank hypocrisy, and it's this... Also, it's the, you know, the situation where if I went to a Muslim rally... Surrounded by policemen, and there are Muslims there holding up placards saying, saying, behead those who insult Islam and British police burn in hell. And I said to a policeman, I feel offended, distressed and concerned, and I perceive this to be a racial or, or, or religious incident. Go and arrest that person. And from what I can gather, the reason that they had never arrested one of these people is because a senior police officer said, if we tried to arrest one, there would be a riot. So... The police have submitted to Islam as well. It's rather Orwellian, isn't it? How has the uh, press coverage been for your arrest? Because to me, this is earth-shattering news that that great, the once great Britain has now uh, surrendered to Islam. How has your press coverage been? Well, we got to the BBC covered it, but not on the not on the television. They tucked it away on the website. The Daily Mail was the was the one that really covered it properly with a full quote from uh, from uh, Sir Winston Churchill. Uh, apart from that, most of the coverage, as I always thought was going to be the case, is in America and Canada, who seem to hold a, a great deal more reverence for uh, for Winston Churchill than anybody does in, in, in Churchill's own country, which is A, terribly sad, and B, a dreadful indictment of of, of 
just how far this country has has fallen since uh, since his day. Yes, as a matter of fact, I would say that America and Canada do have that reverence for Churchill, except for, of course, uh, the leader, Obama, who took Churchill's bust out of his office. And then we had the uh, rather humorous Mark Stein write an article on your arrest entitling it uh, Churchill's bust. <laughs> the double yes, dodge. I know that. We're talking about free speech today on CHRW here in London, Ontario, and we're talking also with Paul Weston, who's in the other London in UK. I understand. Is that where you are, Paul, or are you in, an, in living in another town? Right now, I'm uh, I'm down in Somerset. But, oh, okay. Uh, but London is the uh, usual place. Yeah. I see. Now, the, in Britain, what is the closest thing Britain has to? the U.S. free speech law. What would, what would be the, the big law in Britain that would be your protector of free speech, or is there even such a law left? Well, I suppose you have to go back to uh, to the Bill of Rights, which, which, which please don't ask me what year it was. It was 1689, <laughs> I believe, wasn't it, Paul? Quite, quite possibly. Yeah. Uh, or you go back uh, even further than that, and you uh, uh, you know you have to go back to Magna Carta. But but of course you know we don't have something set in stone as you do with uh, with your First Amendment, and I think we desperately need it not just here but all across Europe, which is experiencing exactly the same sort of things that uh, is happening to me at the moment. And we are all incredibly envious of the. Uh, but the fact that you have this, I mean, I know that it's not 100%, because I, I now gather that, uh, that, that your chap who returned Winston Churchill's bust also sets the IRS onto people who say things that he doesn't like, but you know, at least you do have the First Amendment in principle. Well, uh, the Americans do. Yeah, easy. the Americans do. In Canada, we actually don't. We're very much more like Britain. But we do have a Constitution and a Bill of, uh, a sort of, uh, yeah. a Bill of Rights where our free speech is protected, sort of. <laughs> we're a little bit of a hybrid, aren't we? A bit of a hybrid, yeah. yes. Well, you know, it's this... Uh, it, it is so sad about what happened mm. to, uh, to, to England and Britain because, uh, you know... We, Canada, Australia, America, New Zealand, you know, that whole democratic sort of Anglosphere came from here. It came from our Magna Carta and common law and then was adapted, you know, to the countries that it went to. But it is, it is such a shame that the country that gave the civilized world uh, freedom of speech is now the first country to, to really seriously uh, start to see it being curtailed. Did, Paul, did you expect to get arrested? Was this sort of an orchestration on your part for uh, media attention? I don't mean to subscribe uh, ulterior motives to your, your passioned uh, fight against uh, Islam of, uh, is, is the Islamification in Britain, but, I mean, you are a politician running for the European Parliament. Did you expect this? Um, I didn't fully expect it, no. I was aware that if you go out onto the street in this country and, and mention things that, uh, that, that uh, you are not allowed to mention, you run the very real risk of being arrested. And I think that when, you know, when it is done during an election campaign, because as someone pointed out the other day, Islam is not just a religion, it's a political ideology as well. So what they're basically saying is, is that during a political uh, campaign, other politicians are not allowed to criticize another political ideology, which I think is absolutely uh, terrifying, chilling, and totally undemocratic. And so, yes, I expected it. I, I, not completely, but, uh, but I was fully aware of it, and I was prepared for it. You have bail at the moment, and you're expected to go back to court uh, on Victoria Day, May 24th. Um, what happens after that? I understand that your prison sentence, if you are found guilty, could be as much as, what, two years? Yes, it's not, uh, it isn't just a simple uh, 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 crime, apparently, because they've tacked the aggravated part onto it as well, uh, So, uh, which, uh, which, 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 which makes it worse, apparently. But I expect to, for the Crown Prosecution Service to either drop this, uh, because they, uh, surely they are being affected by, by what is going on now. But if they don't, then, uh, then I presume I will go back on the 24th and I will be uh, rearrested and then, and then tried. Well, um, you will have your day in court. You have a, I would imagine that you have a great uh, way of uh, expressing yourself in court. 
Well, the nice thing about, about being in court, of course, is that you can say things in court which you cannot be prosecuted for, mm. uh, which you, you know, outside the court you certainly would be. So, so if, they, if they did take me to court, I will, I, I will go through uh, with a very fine tooth comb uh, a great many things that Islam says and does, which uh, is exactly the reason that I'm trying to resist it on the outside at the moment. Are you getting any public support? Do you have any people behind you? I noticed that Bill Warner in the U.S. suggested that thousands of people should get together and, uh, you know, in a public square in England somewhere and recite Churchill's words together. Uh, is there, would, would that be a move that could be made, maybe to get the attention of the, the public authorities? We could, uh, we could try to organize that, but I, you know, I have to say, Robert, that, that we are very... Uh, dimified over here. You know, people really are frightened. There is an atmosphere of fear, and and people, although they might want to do it, you know, we often have things where, I mean, for example, we had a, a our, our Liberty GB uh, radio host who who called um, a Muslim a a, a a mendacious lying takir artist recently, who was taken to court over it. He got off. But we tried to organize people to turn up, and hundreds of people said they would go. And then on the day, you get maybe only 10, because there is a genuine fear. You know, the police come up, they take photographs of the people there. Uh, employers can be notified, and the next thing, you, you, you're, you're pulled in. And if you work for, a st uh, for the state, you have to comply with their sort of racial and religious requirements on how you behave. So it's very... You said it earlier on, Orwellian. It is very Orwellian in this country, and people, sadly, are very frightened. Again, that is the true Islamophobia, isn't it, is when people are deathly afraid to uh, speak their mind on well, a, in a country. Of, uh, is it cause and effect, or is it the fact that you can't speak your mind that you're afraid? I, I, think, I think it's the free speech thing that comes first, hmm. and, and the fact that they're, they're squashing it like this. It almost seems like you want to get into a court just so you can be heard. From, yes. from the way your laws are upset up. Now, Paul, you've got a video of actually you standing on the steps of uh, Winchester Guild Hall uh, being arrested. Where can people find your website and the video? Uh, if, you, if you go uh, Google, obviously, the www.libertygb.org, and the video will be one of the first things that comes up on there. I presume that's the best place, or, or you know, Gates of Vienna has it up, uh, Bare Naked Islam has it up. It, it seems to be going out all over the place at the moment, which is good. Well, uh, Paul, we in Canada wish you well. We uh, applaud you, at least I do and Bob does, for your courage to stand up when others are deathly afraid to do so. I think that um, you're doing the right thing, and I wish you well, and I know that... Um, uh, you will prevail, however this uh, works out in the end. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me on, Robert. It's, a, it's been a, a great privilege to speak to you again. I haven't seen you for years, and uh, very, very nice to talk to you. Thanks again. Thank you, Paul. Have a great day. Best of luck.